and just how to tackle it, then the next hour is your answer. So get ready to dial and get some stuff done. And now here's your host, Jackson's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Well, good morning, Mr. Allen. How are you today? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Jim. How about you? Everything well, going well? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good day. It's sunshine. It ain't no rain out there, and I'm up straight up and taking in air, so that's yeah. a good thing. But it's almost 80 degrees already. Yeah, I know. You didn't have to go there yet, did I, you? I know, but you know, it, it just hadn't had breakfast yet either. <laughs> What's breakfast? I, I'm not a breakfast person, so I don't well, miss it. Well, i got to have a little something to wash the old man pills down, you, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> Boy, do I know. Oh, man, oh. just, you know, a little bit little bit here and there. But I, I'm not complaining. It, nah. it, but I do know one thing. I What's think that? it's like maybe five day, five months from today, we'll put up the Santa house and Christmas decorations. <laughs> Boy, and you're talking about looking forward now. I'm just just ready to get out of the heat wave. I'm I telling know. you. And, and we we and we haven't really even started it yet. I mean, we had days first of this past week in the 70s in the daytime and 50s at night in the middle of the summer, or I, at least the beginning of the summer. I, I, was, I was watching the news this morning. Those those uh, poor people on the west coast. Yes. Talking about their excessive heat waves that may hit the 90s and they can't handle it. Oh. Bless their little sissy hearts. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what heat is. Bring them on down to our town. That's right. Come on down here and get some real humidity. Yeah, but at least it was cool four days last week at yeah. the pageant, yeah, you know. Well, and, yeah, we'll take it. And, you know, I learned something last week. What was that? As big a metropolis as we live in. Yeah. If you want to eat. Uh huh. After 10 o'clock at night, Good you luck. better bring it with you. That's right. Good luck. Yeah. There is no place in this town, except for a couple, and you probably don't even want to go there. Yeah. But you, there's no such thing as eating. Huh. Unless you want to drive through a hamburger place yeah. or something or, or some kind of a drive through But a set-down yeah. restaurant, forget it. Yeah. yeah. Done. You know, that's what, I, you know, what I've always thought thought would go if if you had if you had the constant flow and everything was on a good good thing and you got things going on downtown around downtown somewhere to go at 10 o'clock after a show after a movie whatever to do nothing but have something a dessert a cup of coffee you know just kind of a place to well to we're, we're working on it working on that yeah, are you working on that i know a good place for one too. yeah and, and we got it going there too <laughs> Good. Papers are signed. Man, 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 man. Uh, See, you know, I actually had an idea that worked. That's amazing. Yeah, everything, yeah. Uh, everything's gonna gonna work out. But you're right. You know, we need a little little something. But you know, it's not necessarily the fault of whatever you want to blame it on. Yeah. The, the, the bless their hearts, they ain't got any help. Well, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. the problem. They don't have enough staff that they can stay open later. Right. If they want, I went yeah. to three places last week that were said they were open at till eleven o'clock. Uh-huh. Wrong. They, <laughs> good, good luck. Huh? They they just didn't have the help to stay open. Yeah. They were shutting them down at nine o'clock. Yeah. But oh well. Yeah, I have to. I have to. While we're talking about fast food and, and lack of food and lack of employees and that sort of thing, I had to take my dog to the vet the other day in the middle of the morning because she's she's having a little little difficulty, getting old like the rest of us, and so I go to the vet. And uh, I'm thirsty. So there is a drive, drive-in drive restaurant who's been here for a long time. I won't say which one it is. But uh, I drive through, and there is a there is a torn sign on the speaker thing in the back where you order from. Yeah. And nobody's coming like I'm, I'm sitting here and nobody's on the speaker, right? So I'm thinking, well, maybe that torn sign used to say, speaker broken, come around to the window, right? So I drive on around to the window, and I sit there, and I sit there, and I see this lady inside, and she's walking around and, you know, not looking toward me at all. So I reach out the window, and I tapped on on the glass. And uh, I said, is your speaker not working? She came to the window. I said, is your speaker not working? And she said, no, I don't. I think it's working fine. I said, well, the sign's torn up out there. And uh, I said, can I order from here? And she said, well, we don't open until 1030. John, I swear to you, I looked at my watch. It was 1029. Mm -hmm. She closed the window. Exactly. And I tapped on the window again. 
and she came back and I said, are you serious? It really made me mad, you know. I said, are you serious? And she said, I don't understand. I said, you're telling me you open at 1030. It's 1029 by all three of these clocks in my car. And you're not going to let me order right now? She said, we don't open until 1030. I said, fine, I'm out of here. I could not believe it. Oh, I believe it. Could not believe it. I believe it. it. All I wanted was something to drink. <laughs> I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong. Why are you doing me like You're being this? punished already. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man. Now the gripe session is over. John Allen was with us. This is Tricks of the Trade on a Saturday morning, 93.1 the spot. Also on y'all.com. Leave the apostrophe out, please. Y'all.com will let you uh, look inside what goes on during a radio broadcast. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, there's some terrible news going on right now, and especially down in the Florida area where a building's collapsed. Yeah, and, uh, well, I was going to ask you about that. What, uh, what happened, do you think? I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a weird one right there. Yeah, I mean, I know you've dealt with some condos in Florida, not that yeah. far down. But, yeah. Uh, well, you know, that, 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 they're kind of suspecting, you know, erosion of the steel from the salt and the seawaters and the hurricanes and that stuff has right. deteriorated the structural components inside the concrete. But Man. I don't know. That was uh, – they – they came out with a report this morning that was surfaced back in 2018 that said that they had some waterproofing flaws back then that were pretty serious. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it reminded me of little situations here at home that things happen that can collapse that uh, you may not think about. And because I had one of those this week. And uh, got a call, and and I really I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or not. It cause the days, you know, when you you lose track of days sometimes when Boy, you're going yeah. over and over. But got a call from uh, a person kind of frantic and and uh, had water hitting the ceiling in the garage, and they said the pipe on the water heater had had burst, and don't know why, but. Uh, I get over there, and the these wooden stands where people that have gas hot water heaters they put the uh, the heaters uh, up on this little pedestal about 18 inches off the ground. Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, and the the pedestal had collapsed, and uh, the water heater literally fell yeah. into the wall next to it and broke or snapped off those water lines. And uh, come to find out that uh, when the house was built, you know, water heaters, we've talked about this, they're normally the, uh, you figure out where to put them at the tail end instead of the front end of the right. building project. Right. And uh, this house is probably about 30 years old. But uh, the little plywood platform, which basically all it was, it was in a corner. And it had a little leg out on the outside corner, and it was a two-before platform with a piece of three-quarter plywood on top of it. And uh, it had been nailed back when it was originally put in to the wall with two little 16-penny nails with a 50-gallon hot water heater on top of it. And what nobody knew was that the pop-off valve was Every once in a while, it would drip, just a drip down into the pan. And the pan, the water would get into the pan, and you would think it would run out the overflow tube, only to find out that the overflow tube had never been hooked up. So the water just kind of eased out the fitting, went back up under the pan, back to the wall where it would went down to where that platform was uh, uh, nailed to the wall with two 16-penny nails, which over a period of time, and in this case, 30 years, it corroded those two nails to the point it finally just said, I can't hold this no more, <laughs> and it went boom. Wow. And uh, it, it dropped everything down, and uh, next thing you know, you got water going everywhere. So uh, I just added something to my things I need to checklist at home. <laughs> well, you know, that's one thing people don't think about that much, but these supports and between water heaters and pull-down staircases, 
you can you can mess up something if either one of those malfunction. Now, the pull down will always malfunction when you're in it. Yes, yes. And I know about that the hard way. Yeah, I've had one fall down on me, not fall down on me, but uh, come loose at the bottom. Well, I've had one. I've been folded up in one. Oh, As wow. I was halfway up, it fell out of the ceiling. Ew, not good. And uh, it. Uh, all I remember was it's that lady, bless her heart, her name was Miss Burho. Uh-huh. Good customer of mine. Right. She's not with us anymore. But she heard this crash. She walked in. I'm in the middle of her living room, folded up <laughs> inside of a pull-down staircase with it around my neck. Uh-huh. And my leg is through the, the, through the, the, steps. the, the steps. Yeah. And she looks at me and says, you need any help? <laughs> I said, may need an ambulance or saw. What is that? Right, or, or maybe both. <laughs> oh wow, it's it's crazy. But yeah, folks, if you've got a uh, you know water heater out there, you might want to see if you see any kinds of leaking or anything around it. And uh, uh, if you do, investigate it because it will deteriorate and yep. things will cause things to fall down and. You can have, in, in this case, a four or $5,000 little water damage job. Wow. Thank goodness it was in the garage and not inside the house. Why, why, do they, why do they put the water heaters up on that little stand? Is that a convenience thing to get to the controls, or is it for, for airflow, or, or what? Well, it, um, you've got to, on natural gas, you've got to get them up off the floor right. uh, because of the the gas fumes and being able to be accessible and work on them and all that. You don't have to do that on electric ones. Ah, okay. But uh, that's just one of those things. And uh, just one of those things. One of those things that'll, that'll bite you if, you're not, if you yeah. don't keep up with it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's phone right. line is open this morning, 731-891-6161. It'll put you right on the phone with, uh, with John this morning. Or you can text us on the Victory Honda text line at 731-410-7560. We're out there on the stream today at y'all, Y-A-L-L dot com, no apostrophe, please. And uh, that'll get you in another way to, uh, to listen and watch us this morning. We're going to take about a 90-second uh, break, and we'll come back with more of Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. Stay tuned for a very special message from Dustin Ring. Hey, Jackson in West Tennessee. This is Dustin, and I buy houses for cash. And I want to buy more. I also work with over 700 cash investors that also buy houses. The best part is we buy them in as-is condition so you don't have to fix a thing. We will even pay for your closing cost. And we can also close in as little as seven days. We buy vacant houses, rented houses, fixer-upper houses, houses that have caught on fire, foreclosing houses, leftover divorce houses. Are you relocating for your job? Or are you a tired landlord tired of dealing with problem tenants? We'll buy those houses too. And hey, no matter what the reason is, I'm here to help. Call Dustin Ring at 731-549-5480. Again, that's 731-549-5480. Again, this is Dustin Ring, and I buy houses for cash. Call me today or text me, 731-549-5480. Hey, guys, this is Mark here from Jackson Off-Road right here in Jackson, Tennessee. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got going on here. Jeep and auto accessories, weather tech gear, step bars, bed covers, bed lining, lights, offering anything vehicle related. Big or small, come see us guys. Hires, tires are big right now. We're doing discounts on tires. We're doing discounts on hitches. If you're in the market for towing accessories for your campers, come see us. Fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper hitches, wiring, we got you. Look for the monster truck, Jackson Off-Road, right off 45 Bypass, 668-8084. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as 
your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want you to waste it on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. This is WTJS. Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Tricks of the trade on a Saturday morning in West Tennessee. Six, eight, uh, excuse me, eight nine one six one six one seven three one area code. That gets you right into the phone bank or text us at the Victory Honda text line seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. Y'all dot com is an alternative. Jump out there and check it out. You not only can hear what's going on, you can see what's going on. And here's a John. I saw something the other day, Jim, that I don't believe I have ever seen before. Oh, no, not you. You're not sighting UFOs like everybody no. else. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those two. Now, I have I have a few UFOs around the house every now and then with their unidentified <laughs> frying objects. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> but... but uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say unidentified fuzzy objects, that little dog of yours. Now, I, now fuzz butt is at the beauty salon this morning. Oh, well, I dropped me. her off on the way over here today. Okay. Maurice is making her beautiful again wah, right wah, now. Wah. Well, mine, mine, goes in, uh, mine goes in Wednesday to get her quaff done. So, oh, yeah. well, she got so excited this morning. She's sitting on my little leg coming over here, and we stopped yeah. by Pet Smart and and we had to jump out and find a grassy spot right quick because she said, got, here, got a little something for you. And, uh, and, uh, oh, good. And it was her. It was her, not you. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. I get arrested when just, I try that. Just, just check it. <laughs> I, I went into a house the other day. The lady has, and, and this is a good thing, what I'm fixing to say. I'm not embarrassing anybody. It's a good idea, actually. I have never really thought of this, but I thought, well, why not? You know, people are clean freaks around here since we've had all this uh, virus oh, yeah. stuff going on. Everybody's cleaning everything. I went in the other day and I walked into the lady's house and I was there to work on the Venna hood. I was going to check the motor out. It was sticking for some reason. Well, when I was there, her cooktop was right underneath me right. and all of the knobs were gone. And I said, well, and I'm just making conversation. I says, well, what happened to your knobs? She <laughs> says, I, and I'm thinking she might be taking them off for a safety precaution because I was going to be working on top of it and, and didn't want me to uh, accidentally lean on one and turn it on and Careful. all that stuff. The gremlin in the studio. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Who we have here? How's it been going, hey, big guy? <laughs> yeah, right here in the middle of the store. You want to join in? <laughs> Whatever John says, y'all believe. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we'll go for that anyway. Yeah, right. So the, there's no knobs on the stove, right? No knobs on the stove. Right. And, I, and I'm thinking, she's, she's making sure I don't lean on one while I'm upside down laying on it. Yeah. Working on the Venna hood. And she says, oh, no, I'm just cleaning them. I, I said, okay. She said, look here. And she reached over and opened up her dishwasher, uh -huh. pulled it open, and the entire top section of her dishwasher had her control knobs for her cooktop and all, it looked like all of them, all of her receptacle and switch plate covers. Okay. Yeah, never seen that before. No, you may never see that again. But she has these little youngins, and they they they've got little dirty fingers, and everybody's germ conscious. Oh, and yeah. She said, well, I ain't going to take a wet sponge and go over the top of a receptacle or something and run the risk of getting shocked. And she just took a screwdriver and took all the covers off. Whoa. And the entire inside of the top of her dishwasher was full of uh, switch and receptacle covers. They were no. white. And they were even wider now because they'd gone through the cycle. Man. And she was going to put them all right back on, including the knobs on her cooktop. I wonder if she's going to take all the pulls off her cabinets after you left and run them through. <laughs> well, you know, you probably could, but yeah. I got to thinking, you know, that's pretty, pretty smart. Well, yeah. If you got the time to do that. Yeah. I mean, you know, but. Uh, 
I'd be yeah. afraid they weren't dishwasher proof, and I'd open it up, there'd be a big old lump of plastic in there. Well, you know, what's the deal between, uh, you know, a plastic glass and a plastic cover true. on you? Well, and especially the, the old-fashioned ones, the hard ones that are Bakelite, uh, uh, that hard plastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. know, they, they work pretty good. So uh, I thought that was a good idea, so I told her, I said, I may talk about you Saturday on the radio. Cause, and you did. And I did, yeah. so there you go. So good if you idea. got some dirty, nasty, stinky receptacle switch covers in your house or receptacle covers yeah. uh along with the knobs on your cooktop you'll be yeah. all right well so, you know you gave us an idea one time several weeks ago about uh, we were talking about cleaning grills and the in the and the the plates on the grills oh, that yeah. you cook on and all the goodies in there and you say well you know, i said i you know I, I take them outside and i put the greaser degreaser and i spray them down and all this you said just take them in the house and put them in the dishwasher well i ran that by my wife and she said, oh, no, no, I'm not putting those nasty things in my clean dishwasher. So I'm still out there with the, you know, scraping and with a well, wire brush. So, Well, I, I don't think I said dishwasher. Yeah, what would you say? The oven. The oven? Yeah. That's on the other side of the room. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you clean your really? oven if you got a self-cleaning oven. I thought you said oven. the dishwasher. No, no wonder she wouldn't let me put them in there. Well, that's right. Well, well, she was right. I apologize. Yeah, you put them in your oven and put... Now, this is the heavy grates. Yeah. You know, you, you set them in there and uh, you, you hit it on self-cleaning. Yeah. And it incinerates that stuff. Huh. And you just take them out and well, literally like brush to, them off. I like to mess up big time, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That would have been a. <laughs> that would have. That'd have probably clogged the pump up a little bit. That would have been a, a service call. You know, I go to my toolbox, <laughs> move the move the screwdriver out of the way, and call John. And and, <laughs> and speaking of incinerate, that just yeah. something else popped in my mind. Yeah. I saw something this week. Yep. You know, you see these things in the magazine every now and then. You don't ever see anybody that has one? Uh-huh. Well, this week I was up at the river on a little project we had up there. And um, it was a cabin. It, he didn't have any plumbing in it. He just brought his water in. I mean, it, yeah. was, a, it, was, it was really a rough and r- rough. Rusted, outfit, yeah. You know, yeah. But he had electricity. Okay. And I said, well, you know, I, I know what a bear does in the wood, but what do you do if you got to go? <laughs> You know, and things up here. You yeah. know, I'd go right over there. And in the closet, on wheels, was his toilet. On wheels. <laughs> on wheels. Okay. And, and, and it had a cord to it. You plugged it in. An electric An electric toilet, toilet that wheels. incinerated... The stuff. Yes. Now, I have seen those on television in some of these Alaska shows and stuff like that. I have seen one. Well, before. I saw my first one. But now, the question I got, and if people are out there listening, yeah, both of them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it depends on which station we're on That's this morning. True. If at uh, all. It, I want to know, do they really work? Now, this guy says, you know, he says he can spend a weekend, plug it in, flip the switch, and when everything's all done, he's got about a cup full of ashes that he just throws out the back door. Well, and it's you done. grow some tomatoes out there. <laughs> 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 but but the question is, does it stink? He says no, and uh, I don't I don't know. Don't know that I want to try either. But I was just curious if somebody else out there has any experience. With these electric incinerating toilets. Yeah. You know, I, I could think of a multiple bunch of jokes to go along with this. I just won't go there this morning. But <laughs> but uh, it's just something about that intrigues me, and I yeah. don't know why. That, so. that, uh, that is different. So anyway. That's, you know, that's, that's roughing it for real right there now. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, that you could really be on the hot seat with that one. It, yeah. uh, <laughs> you only hope you don't get a dead short in that thing. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> it's uh, we have a text coming in on the Victory Hot. The text line says, "Mr. A, you meet the weirdest people I've ever heard of. People on drugs, I can grasp it. These aren't stories for Norm Abrams, this old house. <laughs> well, you know, 
Yeah, that's not true. I, and I do. I get a lot of calls because nobody else will answer the phone. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I do I do get some weird ones because nobody yeah. else figures it out. But yeah. uh, it it's interesting, you know. Yeah. I, I, as I've always said, in my line of work, uh, the reason I love it is there are absolutely no two days alike. That's for sure. And, uh, That's for sure. I don't think I've had two days alike in 45 years, so it's just, well, that, you know. It, that makes it easier to go to work the next day. You it, know? it is. It, it you really know. does. Uh, same texture says, where was that drive through window, the name of it? Uh, hey. I'm not, I'm not going to say the name of it, but you would know if you were near it, uh, especially on a hot day and you wanted a, uh, a refreshing, cool something to eat. If it has a little curly on top of it, then you're in the right place. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. little curly cue on top of the cone That's there? the one. Yeah, that's the one. And, and there are several of those around here, and this one was near a veterinary office. Yeah. <laughs> people ain't right. No, no. It's that's just bl- bless their heart. But I know some people that are right, and they'll do it right if you do business with them, and that is quality outdoor products. No curlies on those. All the lines are straight. They can make a curly in that machine, though. That's true. If you they want can bend one. metal and put you a little curly cue on it, and uh, it's, it's a good operation. You know, I, it, and, and I've said this before, I've never really seen them do what they do, so right. I went out there. It's a pretty neat little place out there. If you, if you need a place in your yard to put your stuff and uh, need a little outdoor building or maybe you're going to do anything from – putting a roof on your house or building a, a commercial building of any size shape or form they can do it out there they yep. they got everything to make it uh give them the dimensions tell you what tell them what you want done and they can make it right there on the spot and have it ready for you to pick up later on that day yep. it uh they're, they're the good folks are out here at three-way yes, they on are. the left right uh, right there before you get to the bridge and uh you can go out there and, and take the thoughts in your head and, and they'll make it real yep absolutely and if you're one of those the folks who has the ability and the time to do your own work and like to do your own work uh they uh they have a full line of malco metal building tools to help you or your contractor put the thing together when it comes time to do that so That's put right. all the metal roofs and the side panels and all that good stuff so not only can they sell you the buildings and the materials but they can sell you the tools to put it together and if you don't have anybody, they have people that can put it up for you, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Quality Outdoor Products. The name speaks for itself. 888-485-5372. One of our great sponsors here on Tricks of the Trade. So, we've had knobs in the dishwasher. We've had electric toilets with wheels on it. What else have you gotten into this week? Well, you know, it's that time of year where the humidity is up. And uh, we talk about things that happen uh, in your house when the humidity goes on. Your floors will, I mean, your doors will will swell up a little bit. Maybe something that didn't, uh, was working, but now it's not working, you know. And uh, this week we've been dealing with uh, hardwood floors. You know, they'll start to squeak. You know, they'll get to pop. And... uh, you know, people don't put them down the old-fashioned way like they used to. You, you, when you want hardwood floors years ago, you yeah. just you had a unfinished floor. Yeah, it was probably oak. It was tongue and groove, and you put it down with a hardwood nailer. Right. Where you actually swung a mallet and hit this uh, gun, and it drove a nail in at a forty-five degree angle through the tongue. And fastened it down. Right. Well, we got away from all that. People got lazy. We started selling pre-finished floors. All different thicknesses. All different shapes, sizes, widths, and all of that. And and uh, you started putting them down. And instead of nailing them, people wanted to glue them. And that's okay. Not anything wrong with that. But then when you get back to the, the real deal and where you had something glued before... And now you're going to nail something down. Right. Sometimes things happen that you really have no control over. You just got to go in there and maybe do a little something about it the best you can. But you'll get some pops and squeaks sometimes. And getting those out used to be a relatively easy thing to do. But with pre-finished flooring, it's 
sometimes a little tougher. Used to, if you had an unfinished floor, you could go down there and then dust it down with talcum powder. Yeah. And uh, it kind of lubricated the edges. And then you'd finish it, and it'd be all right. But you can't do that anymore. They said you can't even find talcum powder anymore because it causes supposedly yeah. cancer of some sort. Yeah, you get, you, you'll be in a lawsuit for you. For well, you that's know. right. Well, you know, people will be knocking on your door wanting you to retain them to true because your floor may get cancer if you put <laughs> talcum powder on it. I don't know what's going on with all this. But yeah, anyway, that's crazy. So, so now you you got a few pops and squeaks. So what do you do because you don't want to drive a nail down through the face of this pre-finished beautiful floor. So you have to go underneath it sometimes and put in screws. Well, that's a good husband and wife job because it takes two people to do it. First, you got to find the the squeak and or the pop, and then you got to find it under the house. So. Let's say you, you've got one of those and, and, and your wife and you're going to try to do a little project together, which sometimes starts divorce proceedings. <laughs> but, uh, but if you get along pretty good and you want to get a little pop and squeak out, while she's standing up on top of the floor and walking over it, you go under the house and maybe have a, have a screw gun and some short nails. Now, I guess I need to qualify short nails. Yeah. You don't want the screw coming up in the floor. No, no, no. And you don't want it coming up into her foot that's standing on top of it. So measure, know how thick your floor really is, and uh, have a screw of, of the, the length that it needs to be. But this is one of those good situations where a good cordless drill and some good uh, screws that are self-drilling that you don't have to do pilot holes and all that with right. and once you find that squeak and you find it underneath you can shoot some screws up through your subfloor into the bottom of your new hardwood and pull it down to the floor works pretty good just be careful and make sure you know where you're screwing and uh, you can get most of those squeaks out now sometimes on pre-finished floors we can use a little WD-40 because uh, all of all of those floors have got grooves in them where the right. tongue and the grooves come together. But you got to be real careful that you don't stain anything and it attracts dust and all that stuff. Right. So the screws are normally the best. does a pretty good job, but you don't want to use anything else. Uh, there was a product that uh, they came out with years ago that people just loved it, but especially if you had pets at the house. I don't know if it's still on the market or not, but, you know, for years, things kind of go in cycles, and, you know, yeah. people got tired of their hardwood floors, so they went and put carpet on top of them. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you know, you might have your dog running around, and next thing you know, things happen. Or, or, or maybe he's just a big old dog, and he's been outside, and he comes in, he wallers around on the rug. Anyway, you get a little odor in your carpet. Yes. So you go out and you bought this stuff called, uh, was it Carpet Fresh? Or, yes, it's sprinkled on there. Yeah, you yeah. sprinkle it all over it. Well, uh -huh. you know, people think, well, if a little bit will do it, a lot <laughs> of it will really do it good. Uh -huh. I have just been amazed at the carpet I have pulled up over the years that when you pull it up, it literally looks like you got a sandbox underneath the carpet because the whole hardwood floor is just covered in this uh carpet fresh stuff which yeah. is baking powder with a little scent put in it yeah. not hurting a thing but you have to you go in there and sweep it up and you'll have i'm kid you not you'll have a whole lot of it in there before you can start putting your floor down but it, it's good about absorbing odors and and uh, moisture of various types and things that makes it smell a little good but yeah, uh, I, I remember that stuff yeah uh, yeah it was uh, used a lot of it back in the day with that old long shag carpet. Oh yeah, the old green shag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gee, Wasn't that some lovely stuff? Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> goes with your lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what, you, what you don't want to happen is what happened to me. That's when my green shag came out of the other house that we used to live in. Uh huh. One day, me in a hurry, not. The lava lamp, which was in progress, it was hot and it was bubbling, Ooh. knocked it off of a shelf 
onto the green carpet. It broke, and all that oil and goo inside that lava lamp soaked that carpet. It smelled horrible. There was no way you were going to clean it. But the positive side was we got rid of the green shag carpet because what, of What's that. that stuff inside the lava lamp? I don't know. It's, it's, it's an oily, oily. The, the stuff that the bubbles float around in is oily, and I don't know what the bubbles themselves are, but they're, uh, they're, they're kind of gooey when they hit the rug. <laughs> it's not nearly as nice looking on the floor as it was up on the shelf. But it gave you a, an excuse to get rid of got the Got rid of the, the shag. green shag carpet, yeah. Oh, man. You know, I tore some of that out the other day. It went up the side of the hot tub. Oh. <laughs> of course, this was, a, this was an old double wide. Yeah. But they, you know, they, they put, uh, you know, in, in trailers, they put the floor down first. Yeah. And then they build the walls on top of it. Right. So you can't just pull it up like you would a normal carpet. You, gotta you cut have to the cut perimeter. around the yeah. perimeter with a, <laughs> a razor blade knife. <coughs> and... Uh, that hot tub was sitting down on top of this, and the walls of the hot tub. Yeah. That, that took some pulling and tugging. <laughs> I bet. And you'd reach in to grab your, uh, uh, get your pliers to grab the corner of it uh-huh. which, once you made a corner. And it just comes out by the yarn. You yeah. know, the, the yeah. back end wants it, to stay down there. It, it unraveled. Was, yeah. It, it, boy, it's a mess. But anyway, oh, that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. John Allen, we're live at the Dixie Cafe. And a texter over here, uh, apparently he's been down to the farmer's market. Really? He is a happy camper this morning. Well, good. He says, I got peaches from the Georgia girls. I saw Daryl, Daryl Hicks, he's down there shopping this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Fresh uh, Huron corn and baby red potatoes. Nice mix of folks. Oh, the sweet corn ends down there, I bet. Yeah, it looks like some of us has come in, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I'm waiting on the uh, peaches and cream. That's my favorite. Yeah, I agree with you. I yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 It, we were uh, talking about that the other day. One texture, we were talking about how to how to grill it, how you how, how people do it. And I was talking about pulling all the silks out of it and then bringing the shuck back over it, you know, and grilling it. And he said, he said, I don't do that. He said, I just soak them for 15, 20 minutes in the sink. Just cover them up with water. Leave the silks on there. Put them on the grill. Cook them. That'll steam the inside of it. And he said, when you pull the shucks off of them, all of the silks will come with it. So i got to try that next time. I save a step. Well, you know, I I, I soak mine. Yeah. I do that too. But I pull the shuck down, yeah. and I do pull the silk off. Right. And then I fold the shucks back up. Exactly. That's what I used to do. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. And sometimes I'll put a little bit of butter on the inside of uh-huh. it. If i got a tray, I can lay it on out there. Right. And then and then roast it. Are you uh, do you uh, do you do the aluminum foil or do you uh, just put them naked on the grill? I leave them in the shucks. Yeah. On yeah. the grill, and uh, while I'm, I'm I put them on one side while I'm cooking my meat on the other. Exactly. They stay on there a little longer, but you know when the, when the peaches and cream does come in, I don't roast that. You don't. How nope. do you do it? You boil it the old no, way? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I cheat on that a little bit because right. it just makes it so much better. Okay. You take, you you will shuck it. You'll pull the silk off of it. And then I'll lay it in some saran wrap with a little butter. Yeah. And wrap the saran wrap up. Uh-huh. Put it in the microwave. Two minutes in a year. Now, you talking about something that make you want to slap your mama. Okay. It is good. Uh, it, uh, that. That, that, uh, it steams inside that saran wrap, yeah. and that yeah. butter gets on down into them little places that you can't get to when you're dragging that oleo stick across the top <laughs> of it. <laughs> oleo. I, can't bl- I just dated myself <laughs> again. <laughs> did you ever? <laughs> last, was that, week oleo it, the last week it was dippity-doo. Now it's oleo. You're, uh, you're older than you look. <laughs> Well, I had a birthday this week. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, but that's it. But it, but it, it, it hermetically seals all that in there, as the old under, Johnny Carson under used to Funkin say. Under Waggles' porch. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you, in your divine but mystical it, way. Yeah, but you don't have to turn it. You don't have to do nothing. Yeah. And I, and and thing of it is, you can leave it in there for a while, even when it it's you know it goes ding and it's supposedly done. Uh-huh. That saran wrap keeps it hot. And it just keeps on oozing with the butter on the inside until you your steak's ready, and then you bring it in, and you're in good shape. So 
There yeah. you go. All you need is in a salt shaker. <laughs> this Dexter knows whereof he speaks. He <laughs> said, that cooks the worms better to leave the shucks on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happened to the the worms? Now, now, wait a minute. No, no, no. Here we go. I didn't okay. know we were missing it. All right. Now, now, now listen now. We, you know, back in the day <laughs> yeah. when I used to go see Papa on the weekend yep. up in Huntingdon, we'd go out in the field and, and we'd pick corn. Yeah. And every time you'd roll a shuck back, there'd be a big old green worm in the yeah. end of it. Yep. It just happened. Or sometimes he'd burrow on down. He'd get a whole row of corn out and be down at the other end yep. when you'd find him. And and while you're shucking, you, you know, you, hey, you hook your thumb under, you just kind of yeah. thump him off. Thump him know? off, yeah, flick him. And uh, keep on going. You don't have worms no more. I, you know, I wonder if it's because with all the, everything is so genetically engineered now, they probably figured out a way to keep the worms out of there in the genetics of the corn. Well, I guess there may be just so much chemical in there, yeah. they just don't want to fool they, with they it don't anymore. Want that. Yeah, they don't want that. But uh, Maybe you're right. right. You know, we had sweet corn, and then we had field corn, and then we then there's popcorn, yep. and we had fodder that we would have for the that sweet, well, it's a little bit of everything. It's for the cows to yeah, eat later on. Right. And uh, you just, I just wondered what happened to the worms. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there in Texture Land will let us know or Phone Land also, 891 6161. Text is 410 We're going to take a uh, quick break and we'll be back with more on Tricks of the Trade at 93.1. Stay there. Jeremy's Paint and Body. Jeremy's Paint and Body. Jeremy's Paint and Body. Jeremy's Paint and Body. Complete collision and automotive care. Jeremy's Paint and Body. 3539 Highway 412 East Parsons. 731-847-5555. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available, and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Eight hundred seven four seven one one eight six. My name is Jeremy Tate. I'm the director of bands at Gibson County High School in Dyer, Tennessee. I'm one of five band directors that make up the Gibson County Mass Band that will be participating in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. This trip simply would not be possible without you. We need your help. Visit roses2022.com to make your donation today. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Eight hundred seven four seven one one eight six. This is WTJS Alamo Jackson News Talk West Tennessee. 
Who's under your hood? For anything at all related to a car, join me, Russ Evans. And I'm Chris Carter. And I'm Shannon Nordstrom. You don't have to be a gearhead to enjoy under the hood. We keep it light and fun and on a level that everyone can understand while you get free advice and learn about your car. Check us out on the web at underthehoodshow.com or facebook.com slash underthehoodshow and join us every week right here. Under the Hood every Saturday morning from 6 till 8. Presented by Gene Langley Ford and Humble, the dealership service built. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business. Or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura on Carriage House Drive. Back on uh, Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. We're talking about vegetables and portable toilets and a little bit of everything today. Uh, Texter is uh, is on, and the Texter says, Shoe peg, S-H-O-E-P-E-G, corn, is small, and you get it in a can when you can find it. He says it's yummy. Yeah, you can buy that, I believe, or the last time I got some at Kroger's, Top Chef, right. uh, Green Giant. Green Giant makes it. Okay. It's, it's in a can. Yeah. Okay. If you can find the can aisle, they move things around a lot over there, and sometimes you got to look for it. But, yeah. uh, but they, it's, it's one of them little squatty body cans, uh, not like a full-grown can. Right. It's a little shorty. It's a pony. Yeah, yeah a <laughs> pony. <laughs> now I'm dating myself. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Won't go there with that yeah, one anyway. I'll tell you what. You know, once you get all your corn in, your neighbors are going to be over there trying to get some of it. So the best thing for you to do is get you a good, strong fence. You know, that's a good idea. Now, we know just who to call. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. we do. We what? even know the phone number. Do we? Yeah, we do. 668-5959. It's that simple. That sounds like West 10 Fence Company's <laughs> phone is. number. It is indeed. Now, you can get a chain link fence, and then, well, they'll do that, or a wrought iron fence, and that way your neighbors can uh, look through the fence and see all that corn you got back mm-hmm. there, but you can't get to it. Yeah, but this is one instance you don't, a barbed wire fence won't work no. because they can put their left foot on one strand and lift up on the other and let everybody crawl through. That's They'll true. still steal your corn. That's true. So. <laughs> and you hope like crazy that your foot don't slip. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to te- tell on myself because I think statute of limitations has run out. You think? But uh, there was a time back when I was a, I'm, I'm a teenager. Yeah. And there was one of our church members on a Buffalo River float trip. Uh-oh. Miss Patty. Uh-huh. We were on a log together going yeah. down the river, and we spotted a cornfield. Oh, you did. And I looked at her, and I said, wouldn't that be good if we could get that boiling and have that tonight at the camp? She says, that would be good. So we got off the log, <laughs> climbed up the bank. She had on a great big old T-shirt. Yeah. And it was big enough that we could fill it full of corn. Uh-huh. And I stepped down on the bob wire to where we could crawl under, and we raided the cornfield, came back with a couple of dozen ears, jumped back on the log, and floated down to the campsite. Well, had right. it for supper. Now, if West End Fence Company had been there and built a proper fence. We wouldn't have been able to get that that's corn. That's right. Your life of crime would never have started. I, <laughs> Anyway, I could be arrested before the day's out now. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're safe. I think but yeah, that's safe. a good place. Uh, yeah. Rust in Fence Company. They can come out and put your fence up. They can make you a gate that won't droop. Yep. And uh, you'll be in good shape. Won't, won't pop open when the wind gets a little heavy. That's right. They Absolutely. can do that. Absolutely. And they clean up. They, they clean up the mess when they're done. You never know they've been there except you got a brand new fence and everything is looking good. It's mm-hmm. West Ten Fence. W S T E N N Fence. Six six eight fifty nine fifty nine, or you can check the sales department at R Pennington One, the number one, at yahoo dot com. One of our great sponsors here on Tricks of the Trade. We got about uh, about ten minutes or so left in the show. I tell you what, why don't we why don't we talk about one of our other sponsors, and then we'll that'll give us some time to to ease on into the close of the, of the show today. Okay, All that right. would be economy, siding, and windows, and like everybody else. In He's the construction busy. business right now. He is, as they used to say, uh, well, I won't say that because it's not politically correct anymore. He's but a busy man. He is. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it's, even for him, it's hard to get stuff 
So you got to plan ahead. You got to order it, and then maybe in a couple of months you'll get it. And uh, but but when you do get it and he puts it up, it's done right. So yeah. if you need some replacement windows or some vinyl siding, gutters, anything to make the outside of your house maintenance free, that right. is, there's none around here that's any better. And uh, Stormy and his crew will get out there and and get on it and get it fixed. And like I said, all the good people in town are busy right now. And will be for a while, so don't, don't think you can pick up the phone and get him there today. Yeah. He's, but uh, he'll get around to it. He'll get out there, and you'll be glad that you waited because uh, he's, he's the best there is when it comes to taking care of outdoor stuff to make your job a lot easier so you yep. don't have to spend your summer slinging a paintbrush. There you go. You know, all you got to do is wash it off every now and then, yep. and uh, it'll and, be ready to go. And enjoy. 422-3828 or economysighting.com. And we appreciate their sponsorship every week here also. Texter says, uh, I grew up floating the buffalo, many divorces from it. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got caught in the ca- cornfield yeah, we, we or went, somebody else's cornfield. Somebody else's cornfield. <laughs> we, uh, we went on one of those floats with a church group one time. And I, I remember distinctly spending more time in the river than on the river. It My happens. balance was not good back then either. Yeah, so, well. And my, my center of gravity is rather high. <laughs> so you don't lead once you get in the canoe. you got to set up straight. You and could have been a statistic. I could have been. I could have got sucked up under a log down there. Texter also says, I, uh, let's see, I stood laid of corn years ago. Turned out to be feed corn. Ooh. That's tough. That's a little crunchy. Yeah. 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 Cows don't mind, but, you know. Yeah, I think they plant that along the river, Mike, just to mess us up, hoping we'll <laughs> steal the wrong stuff. Apparently you've got the good stuff out there then. Uh, so it's a six, uh, 731-891-6161. If you'd like to talk to John, we've got about seven minutes left in the uh, proceedings today. Text line is uh, is uh, on fire this morning. It's happening. 731-410-7560, the Victory Honda text line. You know, I just thought of something else. You know, we don't go by script up here by any means. Certainly not. Certainly not. Been a couple of weeks ago, young couple bought a house. And everybody, as, as many newfangled things that we have out here to buy and gadgets, they were wanting to go back to the old-fashioned. I can't even say the word old-fashioned on this device. It's just <laughs> natural. But they instead of a storm door, they yeah. wanted a sure enough screen door. Yeah. It's hard to find a good screen door anymore. Really? So, uh, and it's been that way because they're just not made like they used to. So anyway, the guy bought him a screen door and he put it up himself. He did a good job. He even put a little finish on it and uh, he was proud of it because he did it himself. But over a period of time, and in this case, two months, not a long time at all. Right. He got to drooping. And uh, he called me up, and he says, I, you know, this thing was working fine. And for some reason, it, it's, it's drooping, it, and, and I, I, don't, I don't get it, and yeah. I don't want to cut my door and mess it up. I says, well, what you need is a turnbuckle. Yep. And he looked at me and said, what? <laughs> I said, a turnbuckle. Yeah. What's that? And I expl- began to tell him. You know, it's a long rod that's got a, a, a threaded gizmo in the middle of it yeah. there. Yeah. And, you, and you'd put it on the lower end of your door and run it at a 45-degree angle over to the other side of the door, the hinge side. Yep. And then you tightened it up, and it would lift the corner of the door up. Right. And he looked at me and did what most other people do. He went, huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, I'll be. <laughs> and I'll be. How about that? And I said, well, yeah. So he got a turnbuckle, and he put it on. And he says, well, now I'm looking for something else right now. And I said, well, what's that? He says, I remember growing up, I used to have a screen door spring. Yeah. Didn't have one of these self-closing hinges. He says, I want a spring, just like it was. You know, the spring makes it slap you in the behind on your Uh, way out, you know? Yeah. Or when you're coming in. And, uh. We found him a spring and uh, and put it on and got him some little eye hooks to where he could. I showed him how to 
I said, now, you know, one end of that spring, you might want to unhook it. And that way you could hold it open when you're, you're bringing your, your stuff in and right. you don't have to prop it open all the time. So we got him one he could unhook, and I showed him how to grab it so it doesn't pinch his fingers. <laughs> and uh, and I said, now put you this little piece of metal. Now, this is uh, when you open it up your next can good, yep. uh, save the top. And you can fold that over the edge of your door on the inside so your screen don't rub on your door. You know, it'll it'll plow out a spot oh, yeah, on absolutely. the inside of your screen yeah. there. So we, we, we talked about that. And, and it was out in the country, and he kind of wanted to do things. Country-like. Yeah, you yeah. know, the way things used to. So we, we I showed him how to bend the lid of his, uh, uh, it was an English pea can, which I was <laughs> glad to get rid of the peas anyway. But anyway. Uh, uh, we bent it over the edge and put him a little briar in the end of it to fold it down. And everything went fine. So he's got him a screen door with a turnbuckle. Look out! And he got him a screen, and and it it even it even creaks, you know, oh, it makes yeah. that sound, yeah. you know, like the, when it's dragging over the top of that uh, yeah. uh, uh, English pecan lid. Uh-huh. So. No, you know, you had to be real, real careful when you were a kid because you're all the time running down the hall and out the back door just as far as fast as you could go. And if you had one of those old-timey screens where it was nothing but wood frame and screen, you know, you get to flying down through there and you forget to look to see whether that door is open or not. If you right. hit that screen door running full speed, you will strain something. You sure will because, you know, the hook on it. Uh-huh. You had it hooked up from <laughs> you could you could go right good through a perfectly you good show, screen. You showed up good and ruin a t shirt right now, I'm telling oh, you. Trust God. me. Mm. <laughs> like a giant fly swatter. <laughs> we got about uh, two minutes, John. What what else uh, what else can we lay on folks today just to get them through the rest of the afternoon? Well, everybody's using the outdoor faucet nowadays. Yep. And and uh in the summertime, when you constantly turn it off and on, it's one of these frost-proof faucets. Sometimes it gets to squeaking on you, mm-hmm. and uh, you can't oil it right there, and at the top of it where the stem comes through uh, the housing of that of that uh, faucet, right. you have to take it apart. And there's a little little can of stuff that you have to go to a plumbing supply place to get it. Now they may have it at Ace Hardware. But it's called plumber's grease, and it comes in a little can, like a like a small shoe polish. You know how those little flip top yeah. to shine your shoes with people still do that. Oh yeah. And uh, if you can take that bonnet nut off of your outdoor faucet to where you can unscrew that stem, which is going to be about a foot long now, and back it all the way out to where it gets down to the threads where the little rubber washer's on the end of it. Right. And if you'll just take some of that plumber's grease and smear it all around the outside of that, it doesn't have to look pretty. Just put it on there and screw it back in. It won't squeak no more. Wow, that's easy. And you won't taste it either. That's good, too. So, uh, yeah. you know, if you have a squeaky toilet, get you some plumber's grease and grease her up there. You'll be good. Fix it up. Yeah, they're playing that music, which means yeah. i got to shut up. Yeah, we both do. So we'll do this again next Saturday at 8 o'clock. We call it Tricks of the Trade for good reason. John Allen is your host, and we'll do it again. Jimmy Leach, the investigator, coming up here on 93.1. Have a great weekend. See you next week.